I'm Vincent Rajkumar from the Division of Hematology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, we have an article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in the October 1st issue uh, on monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. This is a commentary that looks at the uh, advances in the diagnosis, risk stratification, prognosis and management of this disease. And the article has two messages. One is pertaining to the monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and uh, what we have learned in the last several years. And number two, uh, the commentary goes into how the lessons learned by studying monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance can be applied to other diseases, uh, both uh, malignant and pre-malignant. Some of the interesting things that we have learned in the last few years about monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, uh, we know that it's very common. It's present in about 3 to 4 percent of the general population over the age of 50. We also have learned that it's much more common in African Americans and explains why African Americans have a higher risk of multiple myeloma. Um, we have learned that the increased risk in African Americans is present not just in African Americans but also uh, black people from Africa, suggesting that there might be a genetic basis uh, to the increased risk. Um, we have learned that monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance has a slightly higher risk in first degree relatives, so suggests again a genetic predisposition may be there. Uh, one of the puzzles that we have tried to solve for many years is whether all patients with multiple myeloma start off with a pre-malignant stage where you could possibly detect the patients early and perhaps consider uh, clinical trials. And we found that, yes, indeed, every patient with multiple myeloma has a precursor stage called MGUS that is detected seven, eight years prior to the myeloma cancer occurs. We've learned that uh, as there are many risk factors. Uh, we don't know the precise etiology, but risk factors such as obesity, uh, environmental toxin exposure, exposure to radiation, uh, family history, race, all of these are predisposing factors. We are still working on the two big questions. Why do people get MGUS? And then what causes MGUS to progress to multiple myeloma? As far as monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, the commentary offers new perspectives on diagnosis. Uh, it provides the uh, updated risk stratification and delves into how we can manage the disease by understanding the baseline risk of the patients, such as low-risk patients may not need additional testing or follow-up, whereas higher-risk patients need closer follow-up and also opportunities for entering into clinical trials. The second big goal of the, of the article is to look at how lessons learned uh, in this condition can be uh, related or translated to other diseases. So for example, with regards to diagnosis, we go into how uh, 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 when you define a disease, you um, uh, set forward a arbitrary set of criteria and then you mount a cohort study and validate those criteria and then uh, refine your definition. And I think this is one uh, way of doing things that may be applicable to other premalignant disorders. Secondly, as our diagnostic techniques improve, we've seen in MGUS, and it'll apply to other diseases as well, what we initially consider as one disease is now look, looks as if it's more than one disease when you divide them into cytogenetic categories. And finally, um, what we've learned in MGUS that's pertinent to other conditions is the fact that uh, one size does not fit all and that as we uh, learn more about the disease, uh, you learn that uh, you can risk stratify patients into low risk, intermediate risk, high risk, and each group of patients can therefore be managed differently according to the baseline risk uh, that they have of developing cancer or a serious problem. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.